Hi everyone, I'm Jamie Vaughn with CCM and I'm here today with our special guest, Josh Wilson. Hi Josh, how are you? Doing well, thanks for having me today. How are you doing? I'm doing great. We're very happy that you could take time out of your busy day and, and talk to us. So what yeah. have you been up to during all of our, our COVID trials? <laughs> uh, well, it's interesting because right now I'm in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I live in Nashville, Tennessee with my wife, Be Becca, and our little boy, Asher. Becca and I will be celebrating 11 years of marriage um, next month. And then um, our boy is four and a half years old. So uh, that's been our little quarantine uh, in Nashville. We've been holed up at home, you know, for, yeah. for three months. Uh, I believe March, was it March 13th was our first day. We sort of closed up shop a little earlier than the rest of our city and our friends because Becca ended up getting the flu right as all this was starting. Mm -hmm. And she went and got tested for COVID-19 and, and the flu and her flu test came back positive and her COVID test came back negative. Anyway, yeah. so we started our little quarantine then and me and Asher hung out for a few days and tried to take care of her while she recovered from the flu. And then since then we've, um, We've done a lot of things outside. We've uh, we actually managed to find a trampoline online uh, that we we so we live in Nashville. We found it in Chattanooga, so we drove two hours to go get that. Oh my goodness! Yeah, and Becca found a little outdoor blow up swimming pool as well, which apparently those are hard to find. Uh, any kind of summer outdoor activities have been tough to find. Yeah, because everybody's ordering them. That's all we have to do. Um, but we've jumped on a trampoline, we've played in the pool, we've had uh, picnic lunches in the front yard just about every day, which has been a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, we've gone camping, we've, uh, I don't know, it's, it's kind of, you know, it's funny, it, uh, the days go really slowly, but the, the weeks, they just fly by. So in a way, it's kind of a blur. I'm sure you probably relate to that yeah. a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but we've, we've been okay. And, and I actually played my first show since the shutdown. On June 26th, I played in Sugar Grove, Virginia. It was an outdoor show, so everybody could sort of stay distant. And I have another show coming up here in Oklahoma where it's outdoors, same thing. I'm thankful for that. It's been fun to get back in front of people and play music. Because I've been doing live streams and uh, trying to improvise as much as I can while touring is shut down. But I've been thankful to get back in front of crowds. Anyway, we're here in Tulsa with Becca's family now. And... They are downstairs. Uh, Asher's playing with his cousins, having a great time. Lo loving seeing people. Good. Well, when I get back to Nashville, I'm coming over and playing with Asher then since there's a pool and a trampoline. That sounds yes. like the house to be at. We've got like the basketball goal and the net around the trampoline. Uh, okay. So yes, there is much fun to be had at, at the Wilson fun. household. Fun, fun. That brings back many, many memories. I love that. I love that your little boy's getting to do all of that this summer. So you have a new single out that is very timely. Um, revolutionary. I love the line in it that says, "Kind." why does kindness seem revolutionary? I would love for you to talk about where that song came from. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting because this song, um, the day I wrote it, so I wrote it with my buddy James Teeley and another uh, friend, now friend. I met him that day. His name is Steve Fee. You probably know Steve and uh, both great songwriters. James and I were supposed to write with someone else that day. He, James had come into town to write with me for three days. He lives in Texas and he had a, a session arranged, but that fell through. So James said, hey, I could text my friend Steve Fee and he was available. So we, we went over there and Steve had these tracks, just the music to a few different songs. He's like, tell me what you guys like and we could chase one of these ideas. And um, he he started playing the track to what is now revolutionary and it just had this really kind of fresh exciting sound to it and uh we all were really connecting with the sound and then james said hey i have this lyric uh that i that i've had for a while i've, I've been wanting to write a song called revolutionary and and he had a line <clears throat> why does kindness seem revolutionary and this was back either in november or december i don't remember but I quickly latched onto that idea because I said, you, you know what, guys, uh, this is <clears throat> 2020 is going to be an election year in the United States. And, and this is set to be a really polarizing and divisive year. And it just makes me so sad that our country is seemingly so divided. What if we could write a song that maybe injects a little bit of hope and a little bit of love and kindness into this situation? 
And so that's kind of what we had in mind when we wrote the song was election year. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, when none of us knew the pandemic was coming. Um, and, and so when that came along, that was kind of like, man, this is, um, you, you mentioned that you thought the, t the song was, was timely. And I agree because kindness is, is, first of all, it's timeless. It's, we can always be kind, right? As Christians, we're to be known by our love. It's, yes, it's very timely. And when the pandemic hit, you see people going out of their way to help their neighbors. Um, sure, you see all the bad news and all of those stories on the news too, but, but you also, I love how Mr. Rogers says, anytime there's a disaster, you look for the helpers. You, you look for the people running towards the fire to help. And you saw that. Um, if you've seen John Krasinski's Some Good News, his YouTube channel, all of those stories he collects, I love. Yeah. Um, and so, yes, I was, I was thrilled that that's kind of when my song um, was getting ready to go to radio and, and all this stuff. But then, of course, um, everything else that's happened with all the racial unrest in our country and the murder of George Floyd and sort of the tipping point there. Oh, my goodness. Um, and, and so now more than ever, the, the song feels timely because um, we are all called to kindness. Um, the, the song asks the question, what would Jesus do? He would love first. And the song is about empathy. The second verse says, maybe I'm not like you, but I'll walk a mile in your shoes if it means I might see the world the way you do. And so now, as a white man, I uh, want to do my best to, to learn what it means to be a person of color in our country and learn how I can help, how I can use my voice and my platform. Um, or how I can listen and, and maybe not speak when it's not appropriate to. Um, so the song is, it's timely for me because it's teaching me that I want to be as kind as I can in any given scenario. And that looks different from day to day. Um, but, but yeah, it's funny. I really, I, I, I can't take credit for having a song out that speaks to this unrest in our country right now. All I can take credit for is, knowing that God wanted us to speak about kindness because that's always applicable to any situation. I couldn't be prouder that it's my song um, that I'm a current single right now, but um, you know, because you get these things in the pipeline, you write them and they don't come out for six months. So you never know what's going to happen. But um, I, I can guarantee you this, no matter what happens on the world stage or in the news the next week or month or year, this message will still be timely um, because that's what we're called to. Yeah, I've noticed a lot of people that I've interviewed over the last three months during all of this who have songs that are very timely. They, they all have said what you said. Didn't know this was going to happen. Didn't even write it for this, but how God is using it. So I think that, that God knew it was coming. God knew where, where all this was headed. So I think he's going to run with this song very much so. Now, also, you're teaching songwriting classes online. How can somebody find out about that? Yeah. Uh, so yes, James, the guy I wrote Revolutionary with, and my song Borrow, and my song Pushing Back the Dark, and a number of other songs. Uh -huh. He is a music professor, uh, and he's taught at Belmont University, Lipscomb, uh, I think Truett McConnell. He's brilliant. And he and I are co-teaching a class, and if you want to sign up, it's joshwilsonmusic.com slash songwriting. Uh, it starts, um, when will this interview be posted? Uh, next couple of days. Okay, great. So you still have time. If you're watching this interview, um, the first class is, let's see, today is July 1st. The first class is July 9th, and it's going to go for six weeks, and we're limiting the class to, uh, to 16 students. And if we get more signups, we'll do another class after that. But we're going to do, um, people can submit their songs, and we will critique them. Um, James is going to teach a number of <clears throat> courses that he's taught at college classes, um, and he and I are going to kind of ping pong on the the instruction and this is this is one of those things that because I'm unable to tour um, James is actually looking for a job as well right now we're we're trying to get creative on how to you know pay our bills but also do something that we're passionate about and I think everybody um, if you're watching this you can be a songwriter I'm not saying you have to join our song class but um, you have something to say and and I think songwriting can be a very cathartic and therapeutic um, practice. I think for me, it's like journaling, right? Every morning I get up and I sort of write out my thoughts and I sort of kind of untangle um, my brain. And I think songwriting can do sort of the same thing. So if you're a songwriter or if you just want to learn what that's like, go to 
joshwilsonmusic.com slash songwriting and the first 16 people to, um, to sign up, you'll be in our first, we call it cohort. You'll be in our first cohort. And um, we're really looking forward to that. Oh, I love that. So as a songwriter, I always love to ask artists, what is the favorite lyric or song that you've ever written? Oh, put me on the spot. Um, I, okay, well, there's a few like little lyrics that, uh, like in Revolutionary, there's a little quick passing line in the chorus that says, judge slow, love quick, which I know is not grammatically correct, but as songwriters, <laughs> we have, uh, you know, we take liberties in terms of gr grammar. Um, but that sort of sums up the song, right? Judge slow, love quick. That's we're, we're called to be slow to judge and um, we are to be known by our love. So I like that little snippet. I think as a whole, uh, Dream Small is one of my favorite songs, a song that I'm really proud of because the title catches you off guard and you go, wait a second. And it kind of like gets a few people up in arms. Like we're not supposed to dream small, but that was exactly why I wanted to write it. I, I wanted people to hear that and go, Ah, and disagree with it but then listen to the words because the whole song is about the little things making a big difference mm -hmm. um i'm really proud of just kind of that idea that it's sort of a backwards idea um yeah, yeah i think and i do a lot of co-writing most of my songs are written with somebody else mm -hmm. but dream small i wrote completely by myself so that's another reason i'm kind of proud of that i just sort of went into my cave and wrote it on my own so i'm really proud of that one too so flip side of that, what song or lyric do you wish you had a break that someone else did? <clears throat> you know, a song that brought me to tears the first time I heard it <clears throat> was uh, So Will I, a hundred, I was at a hundred billion X or I forget how they write. You know that song, So Will I by his song, right? That is one of the most poetic worship songs I think I've ever heard. You know, many times worship songs, they're, they're not as, I guess, lyrical or as full of beautiful imagery because they're meant to be sung corporately and let's sing together and memorable and easy to catch on to. But that song, I wish I had written that. I, I was driving and, and I remember I had to pull over and I just, I was really struggling with doubt that day and just thinking, I forget exactly what was going on because it was a while ago. But but essentially the song says, you know, if, if all of creation is bowing down to you and worshiping you, so will I. And and so that was kind of my posture that day. God, I don't don't understand whatever that situation was. Um, the days I'm just not sure if you're there. Mm -hmm. If this if all of creation is gonna believe and worship and praise, so will I. So yeah, that I love that song. <laughs> love it. Okay. As we wrap up our interview, I would love for you to share a message of hope for our viewers. Okay. So our pastor, when um, we have baby dedications at our church, this is something he said to our little Asher when we held him up in front of the church and the church committed to pray for him and walk alongside us and raising him in the Lord. Our pastor prays for these little children. He says, God, give us courage and compassion, courage to do what is right and compassion for everyone around. And that's what we pray for Asher every day. <clears throat> Before the pandemic, we'd be driving him to, to preschool and every day on the way to school, we'd say, okay, Asher, repeat after me, God, give me courage and compassion. God, give me courage and compassion. Courage to do what is right, courage to do what is right and compassion for everyone around, compassion for everyone around. And then I added, we are all fighting a hard battle. I'm sure you've heard that saying as well. You know what, if, if we can just understand that any person you ever meet is fighting a hard battle, that'll give us courage to reach out to them, compassion to um, try and put ourselves in their shoes and, and wonder what it's like to feel what they're feeling. Um, so yeah, the compassion to see the need and the courage to do something about it. I love that. Thank you so much for stopping by and talking to us. And everyone, yeah. make sure to go stream, download his new single, Revolutionary. It is so good. I promise you won't be disappointed. Josh, thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks for having me. And uh, man, I appreciate what you guys do. And thanks to everybody who's watching this. <laughs> and you stop by the office anytime. I <laughs> would love that.